Hi, my name is Alex, and on this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to be talking you guys through how I made my set of zombies for Dungeons & Dragons. I start by cutting out a piece of wire to about 7 centimeters. I don't measure this normally, and I generally just try to do a little bit more than I think I'm going to need. Then take it and fold it in half, clamping it down with some pliers. I then take these two bits and twist them together to form the torso, and this normally ends up being about a centimeter or a little bit more. Then, taking these two bits, I fold them down to form the hips. Again, I don't normally measure, I just kind of base this off of the other miniatures that I have lying around to make sure that it matches them. After that, I start folding in the knees. So with the knees, you actually want to fold them backwards as opposed to forwards, which is something that didn't make a lot of sense to me when I started out, but what this does is it actually forms the calves of the miniature on your armature. I then go ahead and bend out the feet, and it looks something kind of like this. After that, I start working on what will be the arms, and I do that by cutting a piece of wire to about four centimeters, again, not really measuring, and bend this little loop into it that I can put onto the torso of the armature. I then go ahead and clamp that down to kind of stick it to the miniature a little bit more, and then add some glue. Then it looks something like this. Then I make a bunch more. Once I've got them all, I can start posing them and sticking them on these little bottles I got at my dollar store that I find are really helpful as handles for them as I'm working on them. This is what one of the guys looks like. And here are the rest of them. I then take a file to them and add my green stuff. So for those of you who don't know, green stuff is a two-part epoxy putty that dries into a hard plastic that is designed for sculpting miniatures. So I add a first base layer onto the miniature, keeping it relatively thin since I want these figures to be fairly gaunt. should look something like this green stick man without a head. And sliding on into frame, here are the rest of the miniatures with that first layer of green stuff on them. I then can start building up the green stuff and adding some details. Here I'm adding what will be the chest, sculpting that out a little bit. And then I go in and add the pants. So adding just a sheet over it, making it look a little bit more like a kilt, um, then sculpting it as needed to actually make it look like a pair of pants. Here I also add a little bit of an indent towards the top where I can put a belt on later. I then add other details, like here I'm adding a little bit of a patch to the pants. And then I add another small piece of green stuff to the ends of the pants that I can then go in with a needle and rip up a little bit to make the miniatures look kind of old and worn and give them the nice zombie feel. I then add in some other details like some exposed ribs. I then go to some of the other miniatures and give them these little crusader-like things uh, since I want them to be guards. and go to this specific one and give her a dress. I'm kind of working on the folds here. I then work on the heads and faces. So the way I generally do faces is by starting with a little piece of green stuff on one of these sculpting tools that I got with my first set of green stuff, 
and work it slightly more like it's a skull than a face. So adding these indents for where the eyes are gonna be and really accenting the cheekbones. When making faces, it tends to be a uh, lot of push and pull. Uh, you kind of add one detail and then shape the rest of the face so that you don't lose the details that you were working on before and it's a lot of just kind of futzing with it. Then add the mouth in here and I can start working on adding a little bit more emotion as I move the figure around, moving the brow and moving the actual mouth position. Then I can go in with a needle to add some of the final details, like a couple indents for where the nose would have been, but I decided to not give any of them noses. And then I add in the eyes, so just tiny little pieces of green stuff in the eye sockets. Once that sets, I take another smaller piece of green stuff to make the eyelids, adding more and more as needed. And it ends up looking something like this. I tend to try not to work it too much because then it just looks poorly sculpted. I then go in to add the final details. So in this case, it's just the teeth since I'm not giving it a full on nose. I then, while that sets, work on the other details. So adding the belts and working on the hands of the miniatures. I then also get rid of the wires that are attached to all the hands that I would normally use for weapons or if the miniatures are holding something. I then remove the face from the sculpting tool I was working on it on, being careful not to cut myself, and add a little bit of green stuff to the back of it and attach it to the little piece of wire that's been sticking out where the neck should be. I add more green stuff as needed to make the neck and stuff like that. And on this specific miniature, that includes the helmet and this kind of chain mail shawl that I'm currently texturing. I then add the final details to the sculpt, which is all the smaller things like the belt buckles on this one guy right here. And here you can see the final sculpt of all of these miniatures. And probably the most satisfying part of the whole process for me is the actual priming of the miniatures, giving them this nice matte black uniform color really shows off all the details. After that, I can go on and add the base tones of color, starting with this kind of pale green flesh tone, and go over all the miniatures with that. I then work on the different bits of clothing, on this guy adding a kind of khaki light brown for the pants, and on the kind of crusader bit for the guards, making that brown a little bit more red. And for the dress, I made it this kind of gray whitish kind of color. I then add the other details like the bones and any metal bits. After that I can go on and add the shading. So usually doing the wet blending starting with a nice dark green that I mix just by adding black to my flesh tone and adding a little bit of the base color to kind of make the gradient. I then work on doing some dry brushing for the places that needed it, mostly the uh, chain mail. And then I can move on to paint the eyes. For this, I'm using a kind of neon greenish yellowish color. Um, unfortunately, it's a little bit out of focus. And once I've done that, I actually do a dry brushing of that same color just in the parts immediately around the eye to kind of give it this glowing feel. Once that's done, I can add the blood effect, which is just a watered down crimson red color that I add and dab away with a paper towel as needed. I then go in with a dry brush uh, of a slightly lighter red to add some variance to the color and then go in with a gloss varnish to make it nice and shiny. And that being the last step, 
All they need is a base, and then they are done. This project was a really fun one to work on. Um, I like making miniatures that aren't super uniform, and you can kind of play around with adding different just random details, in this case mostly being the gore and the wear and tear on their outfits and that kind of a thing. So in following videos, I'm probably not going to be making as many miniatures per video because this turned out to be a lot more work than I expected. And this is my first video, so I'm still figuring stuff out and uh, would actually love your input on anything I might be able to do better would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. It really, really helps, especially as I'm a brand new channel. If you have any advice for things that I could do differently, or any ideas for videos that I do in the future, please leave them down in the comments and I'll try to respond to as many of those as I can. Anyways, thank you so much for watching again, and I'll see you in the next one.